what's up, what's up, what's up? The Spice Boys are in the building. Yo, my name is Tom. I come from Invergordon. I am the Don. If you thought I was a fawn, that's a deer. No, it's not, because I like venison. Well, We're I back! <laughs> Yeah, so obviously waking up, sleep was a bit impacted obviously with the f after the first day, you know, the adrenaline and the nerves and stuff, but um, yeah, day two, I wasn't as nervous. The thing that was going in the back of my mind was obviously the deadlift event. Um, we will come to that in a bit, but yeah, I kind of felt just like the second day, I was a bit more prepped than the first day. I was, uh, I got up maybe half an hour earlier, did the same routine as I usually do, breakfast, seen Nathan, he advised what to eat and then just try to get into that comp mindset and you know just get the adrenaline pumping a wee bit, the heart racing a wee bit and just get into that competition mode. Okay, so woke up this morning, fell. Felt okay, uh, like physically wise, body wasn't too sore. Um, a little bit of a heavy head. I, I, I don't really know how to explain that, but just like a, like a heavy head, still a little bit dizzy. Um, but yeah, all, all in all, pretty good. Had breakfast, felt a lot better after breakfast. Um, yeah, so the body held up quite well after after day one, after the wheel of pain and the log press. Let's go, Tom! Yeah, so first that was obviously the deadlift, and I think, you know, I've not really hidden my deadlift hasn't been the best. A lot of people have seen it on YouTube that six or seven weeks, the last six or seven weeks, my deadlift hasn't been above 330, 340. Same with the frame carry. Um, I hurt my hip, but I didn't really think too much of it. I just thought it was more in my head. So um, before that event, maybe half an hour, 20 minutes before it, I... Well, I was doing my deadlifts anyway, got up to about 340 and the 340 pool felt very laboured and I was like, like, what's happening here? So I went and see Dr. Todd. I owe Dr. Todd a lot of thanks because he did a few of his checks and my right leg was three inches shorter than my left. My external internal rotations and everything was kind of just all off on my right side. I had stuff going on with my knees, my ankles, so I didn't think it was as bad as it was. Um, but obviously he had kind of corrected it and... My goal was to hit 360 on the deadlift. I wanted just to hit uh, hit the deadlift. If you have to hit a deadlift to get one point. And, uh, you know, I did that. And then I, I finished, I think, second last in that. But the thing that I was happy with was I actually hit a 360 deadlift. And it was uh, a bit more comfy than I did. I, I pushed 380 because I wanted to try and beat Kilikowski and Luke and stuff. But obviously that didn't work. It was one of them things. I still got a point on the board. And I was happy that that event didn't go any worse than it <laughs> than, it's, than it did, you know, and I, a big thank you to Dr. Todd as well for mending me up because, yeah, I was struggling big time in training with a deadlift, couldn't get into the position, like I forgot how to deadlift and he kind of helped me and the rest of the comp after that kind of really helped me to just, yeah, just get back to kind of normal a wee bit, so. I just wish I thought there was something maybe, you know, semi-decent for me in, in the tank and um, he went out, did the opening lift at 360 kilos and that move, moved really nicely. Um, yeah, it, it was a bit of a confidence boost for me and then the, the second lift, I went out and I think it was like three, 386 kilos. Um, 
And yeah, it was awesome. I felt really good. I got it and, you know, it was, I needed that little bit of something. Um, it's one of the heaviest deadlifts I've done in, you know, a little while. Um, so I, looking at it, you know, there's loads of negatives, but the the strength is there. I know that, you know, that's the thing. It's statically, I feel my strength is there. It's my my conditioning that's let me down. But um, yeah, first event deadlift went reasonably okay. <laughs> It's an unknown one, it's a really strange event, um, but a really cool one, so it was, it was quite nice because you're quite excited, like a little bit of a buzz and kind of like, okay, this might go okay, you know, do something. Um, so I decided to <laughs> sit it on the head and and throw it from there. Um, it's, it's a strange event because it doesn't take a huge amount out of you. Um, it's more like the explosive, like, powered kind of goes um, so I don't know how I still don't know how I feel about it <laughs> um, it's, it's a strange one because when when you're in a comp and you're like in the top five top four whatever you've got a lot more energy you know you've got a lot more um, you know your mindset's different um, it, it was, I won't, you know, it was hard to get into that mindset of, you know, believing that I was good enough to do well in this comp after yesterday. Uh, after yesterday. So. The official time, here we go. Event two, the stone thrower. This has never been seen before, and I think this, you know, people say it's a tall man event, small people aren't good at it, but I think it's more about just a technique, but also your luck of the draw as well. You know, you can get one good release, and that's all you need. And, uh, you know, my first throw was good, my second throw wasn't the best, and my third throw I thought was better than my first, but obviously wasn't. I think I finished in the fifth place in this event, but, you know, I maybe could have placed maybe one higher. Again, I think I got beat by 0.2 or 0.3, so it was these kind of small margins again that, you know, mixed people up and got people in between each other, but stone throw, stone throw. I mean, it's a really cool event to watch and cool event to do, but again, it's a hard one to kind of get, get perfect. You know, you just have that one lucky release or one great release, and that can be it, and a few people want it on their first throws, so, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a weird one, this frame carry. Warm ups went really well, warmed up to about 370. Um, felt fine picking it up, gripping was good. Um, but yeah, it's just frustrating um, sometimes. It felt good. It felt okay actually picking up the first time. I thought, right, this is actually quite good. Um, but that frame, it's uh, it's difficult. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it sorts the men out from the boys, and I was definitely a boy today. You said, Mark, no straps here. 881 pounds on that bear grip. And he is fighting it.
I think winning for the last event, which was a frame, I was sitting, I think, in seventh place. And I think a lot of people know me and know that my frame carry is probably one of the worst in the top ten people in strawman. I think it's, you know, Arnold's last year, I didn't even, I don't think, moved it one or two metres. So to, like, pick it up and, again, to move it. Again, this was one of the events I really struggled with in training. I think the max I got to in training was 340 because of the hip problems and the glute problems. And I was just... Trying to just grin and bear it, and you know that's I'm so thankful. I said again to Dr. Todd because this was the last event I picked up and you know walked. To, I think I got fourth place in that. And that's the first time I've been fourth place in a frame. So, you know, for me that was a per big personal achievement, and I wanted to finish in the top five at Arnold's. After the first day, I thought fifth place would be really good. I ended up finishing joint sixth, one point or fifth, and the frame carry actually saved me for once, which is usually the other way around. It usually makes me become last. So I was, I'm so thankful for the frame carry and again, so thankful for Dr. Todd to looking over my body and to addressing the issues. So. Getting his hands right. And Stoltman fighting. Ten seconds left. It's so much harder to get leverage once you get at an angle. Pictures with my boys. <laughs> some homies to come out. Yeah, you need some bros to come in. Yeah, do, do as you do. Yes, please. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, thank you to everyone that stayed behind and wanted photos, wanted signatures, and just that we could put smiles on their faces. You know, that's just why we do this. Um, although we don't always perform our best, it's nice to see that the support we've got and to see the kind of true fans as well. You know, we had people travelling over from Britain with Scottish Scotland flags, just came all the way over just to see us. So it's, you know, I'm very grateful that I can inspire people. You know, I always talk about it. I'm trying to be a big massive ambassador for autism. Sometimes I don't perform the best I should be. You know, being World's Strongest Man is a lot of pressure to perform every single competition. But, you know, I met some people at the Arnold's that has had autism and, you know, they said it was a superpower. They said I've changed their life. That's that's good enough for me. So if I can do that and keep inspiring people and keep, uh, you know, keep making people happy, I'm, I'm happy as well. But, yeah, at the end of the Arnold's, big thank you to everybody that stayed behind and uh, wish myself and Luke, you know, well done. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. <laughs> Yeah, and then you know to all the guys, all the the people that you know turned out today and over the weekend and you know across the airport when we were there saying hello, stopping. It's um, again, it's not lost in me the fact that people are willing to give up their time to see us, even when things maybe you know we didn't perform as well as we should have, and you know to each and every one of the people that kind of stopped to say, well done, can I have a photo and please don't ever stop doing that because fuck me man, it makes me happy. Like having that, you know, people smiling when they get a photo taken with us, that's, that never gets old for me. It's um, really special. So yeah, thanks to all you guys for, for doing that. We came, we saw, never disappointed. There's always next time, Flo.